it, it shouldn't be a battleground for Russia. But on the other hand, of course, with Finland and Sweden seeking to join NATO, it is also the case that the European Arctic is likely to become more tense, not less. Governments across Europe have been on high alert since Russia invaded Ukraine. But what or where is going to be Russia's next battleground? According to the think tank Civitas, the answer to this question lies far north in the Arctic. Klaus Dodds is a professor of geopolitics at Royal Holloway University of London and an expert in the international relations of the Arctic, where China, Russia and Western allies are vying for power. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, why would this be attractive to Russia? Well, uh, on the face of it, Russia Russia has little to no incentive to have conflict in the Russian zone of the Arctic Federation. And the reason is very simple, is that President Putin has been very clear that the future of the Rus Russian Federation lies with the continued extraction of oil and gas in the Russian Arctic. And there's an awful lot of it, frankly speaking. And that oil and gas needs to find markets. In the past, it would have been uh, looking towards Europe. But really, since the sanctions started to bite from 2014, 15 onwards, it's had to look to China and other markets uh, in Asia. So it, it shouldn't be a battleground for Russia. But on the other hand, of course, with Finland and Sweden seeking to join NATO, it is also the case that the European Arctic is likely to become more tense, not less. Mm. And how much of this is about uh, shipping routes, the maritime route, uh, having to, to bypass uh, other areas that are perhaps blocked off in, in terms of getting oil and gas to other countries? So there are two, there are two main facts to this. The, the first shipping route, which is of extraordinary importance to Russia again, is what's called the Northern Sea Route, which runs literally along the ed top edge of the Russian Federation. Mm. So that's the one that Russia is absolutely adamant. It has to keep safe and secure because that's where, for example, um, LNG, liquefied natural gas, gets transported from Russia to the rest of the world. The one that's probably more interesting is what's called the Transpolar Route, and that's the one that would literally cut through the Arctic Ocean. And as sea ice continues to recede, there is, of course, an expectation that the Central Arctic Ocean shipping route might be of huge interest to countries like China because it would run through international waters and therefore be beyond the control mm. of a country like Russia. Absolutely fascinating and, <laughs> and also uh, also quite quite worrying. Just very, very quickly, what what um, what action has uh, Moscow taken so far in that area in the in the last decade or so? Yeah, so simply put, it's done several things. Number one, it's invested hugely in modernizing and militarizing the Arctic. Mm -hmm. So in the past, we would have said that the Arctic was a zone of peace and cooperation. Russia has done everything in its powers to militarize that space. And the second thing is, whilst everyone's talking about the likely impact of Finland and Sweden joining NATO, Russia has long treated Finland and Sweden as if they were NATO powers. Mm -hmm. So both countries would tell you of all kinds of things like GPS jamming, interfering with airspace, just making life incredibly uncomfortable where it was possible for those countries. And that's likely to intensify. And all of that instability will, will extend, if you like, in an arc from the Arctic to the Baltic mm. to Eastern Europe, including, of course, Ukraine.